this is this is this is Uh, I'm feeling good, feeling on cloud nine, feeling on top of the world, feeling a thousand feet high. I can't believe we really pulled it off. This is really the first episode since January 6th, MXPX at the Hollywood Palladium. Um, On the last episode, I said, you know, I'm recording this before the show. I, I assume it all went to plan and we had a great show and I was right. We had a great show. Um... You know, there was a few things, you know, at the beginning of the day that we had to fix, a few problems, but nothing that we nothing that we could have foreseen or, or planned for really. It's just things things get fixed. But the show itself, the everybody, all the bands were great. Um, had a great time seeing all my friends, um, meeting a bunch of new friends, seeing some family members. Um, we really, really had a blast. MXPX headlining and selling out Hollywood Palladium. Not only that, but I really I wasn't. I don't think this is coming just for me, but I was told, and and I really feel it in my heart too, that we not only sold out the Hollywood Palladium, but we owned the space. We owned the night. We really belonged there. We put on a great show. We put on the show that we needed to put on that night, and it just propels us forward into this year, into the, the next era of MXPX, and I'm just so happy. So thank you, everyone, that, that came out and supported. I know um, there was a lot of people out there that hadn't seen us in a long time and people that have seen us every time we come. So it was a mix of, of new and old fans, and uh, I feel great about it. I love seeing all the, the families out there, the parents bringing their, not only their kids, but their maybe sometimes their parents. And it's just... It's, it warms my heart. It, it melts my cold heart that is frozen and, you know, having, a, having trouble. But uh, that really, really did me solid. It really did. Just getting to stand up there and see all these people singing songs, singing MXPX songs. And, you know, shout out to Pierre Bouvier, Simple Plan. He came out. He drove an hour and a half out of his way to come and check out the show but you know be part of the show as well you know be part of the show was the main reason for him to be there but it was um awesome to see him got to see our good friend chris rowe from the ataris a little sneak peek of what what you might get um out on tour with us i don't know we're gonna do some fun stuff um i'm really looking forward to this year of shows we got mxpx coming to new york city new york city webster hall February 9th, MXPX in the Ataris. Tickets are on sale right now. Go get them at MXPX.com. I thank you for that. Uh, February 10th in Philadelphia, sold out. Thank you. Um, we have we have tickets um, available at MXPX.com for a couple more dates. Let's find these. Uh, we got Buckhead Theater in Atlanta, Georgia on March 15th. We have House of Blues in Orlando, Florida on March 16th. And then we have two sold out shows in April. April 5th, Ogden Theater in Denver, MXPX, Five Iron Frenzy, and the Ataris. That's sold out. And then Salt Lake City on April 6th at the Depot, MXPX, and the Ataris. That's sold out. So thank you guys. MXPX.com for the rest of those tickets. And we will be announcing more shows soon. Um, we're just not ready. Not ready to do so yet. Um, as you know, we're always working on something. So appreciate you guys. And don't wait on those tickets because I, I I expect New York City to get very, very full. And that's coming up real soon. That's coming up in a couple weeks. And we have our flights. We have our hotels. We're ready to rock. Um, I need to change up the set, do some stuff. Uh, we'll, we'll do that in practice. We'll be practicing for our New York and Philadelphia shows. Um, all right, we're going to do some voicemails today. Voicemails, and of course, um, your topics, your questions, whatever you want to talk about. We're going to take that. If you want to be in, you want to call, you want to be on the show, call me at 360 830 6660. Leave me a voicemail. Let me know what's up. Ladies, would love to hear from you. Um, mxpx.com we have merch all of that you can always go there thank you thanks for supporting all right let's get to this let's get i i i want to i want to read you before we get into voicemails i want to read you a tweet i read and i was like that's 
That's an interesting idea, and not not even idea. I just I think I'm obsessed with placebos. I'm obsessed with the idea of placebo. Does the placebo effect work? Is it real? I always thought it was something that was kind of real because your mind is powerful, but that may not be the case. Um, not sure. Not really sure. But I just ran across this tweet. I don't even follow this guy. It's Jonathan. Pallison, he is a he has a PhD in statistical genetics. Jonathan Pallison, um, that's J O N A T A N P A L L E S E N. Okay, he's from Copenhagen, Denmark. So what he says is incredibly, the placebo effect is mostly not real. This is the line that got me to read further. Mostly not real. Okay, okay. Uh, I'm a person that always thought, okay, maybe even if the placebo effect isn't real, real, it's making real world effects in the world. Like people change their decisions. They do things based on placebo effect, right? Back to his tweet. So I'm starting over. It was one line. Incredibly, the placebo effect is mostly not real. He continues. It is a result of statistical confusion. Whenever you have a group with extreme values, they tend to exhibit regression to the mean. Example, on average, sick people tend to become more healthy over time. Now, I read that. I was like, okay, I get it. That makes sense to me. I'm not a complete moron. Maybe I am, but not, not as bad as I thought I was. So he continues, thus, if you give one group medicine and one group placebo, the placebo group will also tend to get better over time because of regression to the mean. This makes sense. Yes, of course, you're going to heal. You're going to get patched up over time. Time does heal. All right, back to his tweet. People have then misinterpreted this to think that it is the placebo pill that actively does this. Whoever thought it was the placebo pill actively done okay that's where i definitely uh, i'm a little smarter than the average person because i never thought it was the actual pill doing it the placebo is all about your mind what your mind is thinking in my thoughts all right back to him if you want to demonstrate a placebo effect you have to construct a study where there are three groups a treatment b placebo c no treatment no placebo Wow. Yeah, that makes all the difference. All right. If B and C get different outcomes, that would demonstrate a placebo effect. When this has been tried, mainly there has been no provable placebo effect. See, the paper in the screenshot. Okay, there's a screenshot. Okay, hold on. We'll see. We'll see if, it, if we can get this without showing you that. Um, there is some evidence So see the paper in the screenshot. There's some evidence for an effect for pain, but this gets into a slightly different debate. Okay, parentheses. So the fact that the placebo effect is mainly not real, fortunately, frees us from having to come up with convoluted explanations as to why the placebo effect would work even when we tell the patient that it is a placebo, as in the quoted tweet. Okay. Regarding the pain results, it is easy to imagine that patients would indicate that they have lowered pain after receiving treatment from a doctor. But whether they actually feel lower pain is a harder question, possibly impossible to answer. So it's hypothetically possible from the data that placebo makes people actually feel lower pain. But with the results, oh, sorry, but the results are also concordant with it being solely a reporting effect. And it would be somewhat surprising if placebo didn't work against anything except the one thing we can't properly test for. So I could read you things that people write about it or whatever, but like basically what they're just saying is, what he's saying here is you need three groups. You need the treatment, placebo, and then no treatment and no placebo in that third group. And If B and C get different outcomes, that demonstrates the placebo effect actually working. Now, if you have no treatment and no placebo, 
and you get the same results there as you get in the placebo, that's no placebo effect. It's not working. So to me, I think the placebo effect works on some things and not on others. I think your mind is very powerful, but there are limits. You can't just make yourself fly, right? Like you have to work at, at any rate, you have to work up to that. Like, I feel like we can't just go out and play a show. We have to build the set. We have to build the stage. You have to build yourself into whatever it is you want to do. And I think the mind is, is very much like that. Now, why did I read this? Well, I read this because I'm interested in it. I, I, it fascinates me. Placebo effect fascinates me. The powerful thinking of the mind, if, you know, and, and affecting things in our physical world, in our real world, that, if, that really is interesting to me. Um, and so I just thought I would put it out there for you guys if you want, you know, whatever. Do what you got to do. Um, I, so is the placebo powerless? Here's another. This is the screenshot that that was put up um, on this tweet. And it's asking, is the placebo powerless? Update of a systematic review with 52 new randomized trials compared placebo with no treatment. So they're starting to, to do these trials with that third um, no placebo and no treatment and um, data was available in 42 out of 52 new trials the results were similar to our previous findings the updated review summarizes data from 156 trials we found no statistically significant pooled effect in 38 trials with binary outcomes relative risk 0 0.95 95 percent confidence i don't know what that means the effect on continuous outcomes decreased with increasing sample size and there was considerable variation in effect also between large trials Con let's just go down to the conclusion here we found no evidence of a generally large effect of placebo interventions a possible small effect on patient reported con continuous outcomes especially pain could not be clearly distinguished from bias Honestly, I, I feel like the placebo effect is all about what you're, you're telling your brain and what your brain's telling you. And when you're not told you have the placebo, you, it doesn't work. You have, you're, it's all about your mind. Uh, all right. I'm done studying for the day. <laughs> let's get to voicemails. Woo! All right, let's go. Um, let's start with a brand new one, and then we'll go back to the, the bottom of the pile. All right, here we go. Hey, Mike. Uh, good morning. It's Carrie from Vegas slash Austin. Um, I just saw you in L.A. a couple of nights ago, um, but really I only spoke to you for like a quick hot second. I was about to listen to the podcast this morning, and I just wanted to call real quick and thank you for the absolute best night before I lost the guts to do so. I'm just on such a show high um, right now, and my heart is pounding. Um, so let me kind of like see if I can get this out eloquently, but I'm totally in my find a way home era like you know that there's this time during adolescence at least there was for me right where you become your own person right that time where you start forming who you are as a person and you know you're making conscious conscious decisions about what you're going to spend your time doing where you're going to put your energy what bands you'll listen to and for me like I have early memories of sitting in my parents car in the driveway listening to music and like those songs kind of backdrop that time era for me that kind of started around that time period but really the next and really only memories that I have of being conscious about my decisions around the music that I listen to and like what was in the background of these eras of my life, MXPX is always, always there, right? Like your music has always been with me through almost every single like conscious iteration of who I have been through my life. You have been such a constant MXPX, right? It's like my mom, my sisters, MXPX, that's it. And, like, not only this backdrop, but you were just such a conduit for everything punk-related. Like, I couldn't go to shows, and your show with Face to Face at the Hunters in Vegas really made me, you know, made my mom kind of start coming around to that idea of going to punk shows. Um, I lied to her about it, and she snuck out to see me. And that's an, another story for another time. But I did get to see her in L.A. because she lives in Southern California. And so I get to, like, staff these things that, you know, really mean a lot to me, these people, and, and MXPX. And I really appreciate you, you know, having shows in places like L.A. because... 
gives me an excuse, an excuse to come see her, see my family. She couldn't make it to the show. She actually wanted to. I mentioned last time that she's in treatment with stage four kidney cancer. She won't ever beat this, but maybe there's still time um, to get her to a show one day. Um, we need more 4 p.m. shows, like at, when we were young for the moms. But there's, you know, been like, I don't know, a lot of hurry up and wait with this. She's stable right now. Um, I really appreciate you sending her your love last night, last time. Um, I'm speaking of your mom. Say hello to yours. I'm probably going to get cut off, but my only regret was not saying hello to her at the show. I had a chance, and I was talking to Chris Barch, and I didn't, and I got totally fanstruck. So, hi, Michelle. Um, I'm Karen, the one that placed that big order with the kids' hoodie. We actually lost that kids' hoodie in the Pacific Ocean, so I'll have to place another order. But love you, Mike. We had 11 of us there for your 11th album at the show. It was amazing. Best show ever. It was my absolute favorite one. I'm totally in my find a way home era. I feel like I hit the fan jackpot every time you say hello to me. So thanks for walking over and saying hi. Um, just love you. Have a great week. Bye. Carrie, thanks so much for the call. Yes, I'm still on a show high too. Like I feel so pumped up from from that. And I, like like I said, it's just like I'm speechless. I'm like, wow, that happened. Like we got to see so many people that it's been so long and it was just it felt so good it was like it was like listening to punk rock show over and over and over it was like feel good feel good feel good it was so good it was great it was um it was everything we really wanted it to be and of course you know something there wasn't room for everything but like those are all you know what happened was perfect it was great like i i can't i can't say anything bad about the weekend honestly it was um it was so much fun we we had a great time seeing everybody and and yeah yeah there's a few regrets like you didn't get to say hi to my mom and and it's things like that those are the only regrets i didn't say is or spend enough time with a few people or or say hi to somebody yeah that definitely but life is good and uh the find a way home era is for everyone so thank you for being part of that and we all need to find out who we are we need to think about those decisions because we're going to have memories no matter what we're going to have we're going to have times to look back on and and i think if we craft those memories a little bit better i think uh we're going to be happier in the future and what i mean by that is craft your life now like think about the life you want to live and of course you know you most people want to be happy most people want to be comfortable most people want to have less anxiety in their life and less uncertainty but we don't just get there without doing something about it. We got to make a plan. We got to have ideas. I feel like poverty and, and um, when we fail and when we're not doing well in life, a lot of what we need to do is just come up with an idea, come up with like in here, like this is sometimes you can't work your way out of poverty. You, you can't make enough money. You can't, you just can't. There's just, this job doesn't pay enough. Like it's just not going to work. Um, if you feel like that, I, you know, and I felt like that, you know, before maybe, but I feel like there's always that hope in in my job. Like, I, there's no real limit to the amount of money I can make because it's just like I could get I could get lucky or <laughs> I could find success in the fact that I just never quit. But um, but I think finding success and failure and all of that is it's just. You know, it, it's it's going to happen no matter what. It's just a matter of what you really put your thought towards. Really, you know, the placebo effect to me may not be real scientifically, but if you think about something out of out of the realm of thoughts, I mean, aside from your thoughts, your thoughts are going to create actions. Your thoughts are going to create things in, physically to, to to happen. So when we have ideas and they, they become you know, you have an idea for a song and it becomes a real song and we're playing it at a show that's people are there physically. It's like, this is a real thing, even though it's a song, it's something you listen to and you can't really like capture it. It's on the CD, it's on the vinyl, it's in your phone digitally, but like, how do you get it? it, it life is so weird like that. So yeah, I mean, who are you as a person? Asking those questions is so important. And the earlier in life you can ask them, it's not meant to be like, you better be asking these hard questions and answering these and, and knowing what you want. That might be too much too. That might be too stressful. But 
you got to choose something. There's, there's so much choice, the paradox of choice, right? When we have too much to choose from, you can't choose anything. It's back to the blockbuster video days where you're looking at a VHS tape and there's movies all along the wall. And you're just like, I don't know which one I, I'm the, what I choose tonight is going to dictate what I do for the next three hours or two hours or whatever. Right? Like, long movies these days maybe they weren't as long back in those days but <laughs> just saying like what you choose today and what you don't choose today will inform your future it, it, i'm telling you I, I don't care if it's good or bad it, it it's going to inform your future so when you decide i want to get up and start working out every day i want to get up and study a, a foreign language i want to whatever it is you want to do right like i'm going to get up i'm going to be the very best i can be at my job even though my job is is not something i enjoy you know but you know i think there was uh, i don't know the names of people but there, there was a, a, a philosopher back in the day that was punished because he was doing really well and so like the, they like put him in a job that was like you're the emperor of toilets you know or some, something like that like he was in charge of all of the waste and all of the things and this is ancient rome and instead of being like oh this sucks he transformed that whole department into something miraculous and made those toilets work great and he cleaned all the toilets you know all the toilets were spotless he had a team of people that made the toilets of rome or greece or wherever they were uh spotless and in that's what i try to do that's what i think you know anybody that that does something that matters you know you started out maybe cleaning toilets you started out doing things that didn't matter but it's all about your attitude it's all about what you put into whatever everything you're doing right so that's a that's a big lesson for me even now i have to remind myself you know everything you do do it your best and even if my best even if my not trying is better than most people's trying uh, maybe like with songwriting or this or that like i'm not saying with math i'm not that good at math but like even if you're really good at something and you don't have to try at it but in because you're better than most people that's not an excuse to lay off like try your best no matter what and i, and I think you're always going to be happy and you're gonna when you have these memories in the future it's going to pay off. You're going to be like, I did everything I could for that, that situation right there. And it paid off. And that's how I feel about the palladium. Like there's a couple things I could have done better promoting the show. And, but I really feel like I, I did what I set out to do. We really, you know, we wanted to go and get on a bunch of podcasts, talk to a bunch of friends about the shows, uh, do a bunch of promos, do a bunch of videos, be talking about it all the time you know and it sold out and and it was like okay so all these things that we did and there's a bunch more other things that we did i'm sure uh, uh you know in the background in the, on the on the back side on the flip side we don't see it but bottom line is is all that hard work paid off hollywood palladium sold out and you can't do that for every single thing in your life. There's things that are going to fall by the wayside. So remembering that what you spend your time on is what is going to flourish, but there's still no guarantee of that. You know, it still might, it might fail. You know, nothing is, nothing's really guaranteed in this life. So um, I know we went through a lot there, but wrapped it up <laughs> wrapped up a little bit with the placebo effect um but i love this conversation i love this call carrie um it really it really inspires me to keep going it inspires me to keep keep doing what we've been trying to do which is inspire you guys uh give you guys something to look forward to uh give you hope and this world is dark there's a lot of darkness to the business world, even in the music business. It's one of the worst. But seeing people out there singing MXPX songs, clapping along, yelling, screaming, uh, posting the videos and the pictures uh, after the show, and tagging us, like that is, it's just such a community. It's such amazing to, to, 
to be part of something bigger than than myself to quote yuri to be part of something bigger than myself um has been amazing so not going anywhere we're uh we're kicking off 2024 and man what a good and crazy scary time to be alive let's be honest it's not always good but but it is uh I do try to take advantage not only of the technology that we have here, but um, just the fact that people, if people still care, I'm not going to let up, you know. It might be one thing if people didn't didn't come out to the show. Like, we tried to play the Palladium and nobody bought tickets and we sold, like, the same amount as we'd sell for, you know, the, the House of Blues or something. But, no, that didn't happen. That, you know, I feel like we have a mandate now to go out and keep spreading punk rock and positivity and um positivity is is honestly it it's just something i choose you know you know there's there's plenty of stories i read that are devastating and are very very sad but i choose to spread spread the the positive stuff so and and sometimes the funny i, I love funny stuff too so i'll spread that around too but mxpx is overwhelmingly just about keeping life positive and keeping our music upbeat and um because we need we need placebo effects if anything music is one of those that really gets you through those hard times and whether it's a placebo or if it's something real in the frequencies in the music in the words the lyrics i don't care all i care is that it's working and people are happier when they listen to mxpx and they're happier when they make MXPX part of their soundtrack. I love that, Carrie. I love that you brought 11 people with you to celebrate our 11th album. And um, I wish you the best. And I'll see you at the next one. All right. Maybe not the next one, but I'll see, I'll see you sometime soon. All right. Thanks, Carrie. Let's get to, let's get to another voicemail. Hey, Mike. It's Bill calling in from Brockport, Pennsylvania again. Uh, a couple quick things, and then I have a quick story for you. Um, first off, super excited about the tour announcement. Me and my girlfriend are going to be checking you guys out in Philly and New York City. Wonder if you have anywhere you recommend checking out while we're in the city that might be like more off the beaten path. You know, something cool, different, but still worth going to. Um, still loving the new album, listening to it all the time. It left the CD player in my car for a week when the Blink album came back out, when the Blink album came out, and it quickly got put back into rotation. Um, so, quick story time. I was at work last night, and a co-worker come up to me, and he's like, hey, I know, know we don't really talk, but I wanted to say thanks real quick. I'm like, well, thanks for what? Like, I work in maintenance. I didn't know if I'd fix the problem he was having that he didn't speak up about or anything. He's like, well, you were listening to your radio a couple weeks ago, and I guess he's been dealing with um, coming on and off of drugs and really going through a hard time in his life, and I had the new MXPX album on, and he really connected with some of the lyrics, um, used an app on his phone to figure out what it was, and he's recently become a real big fan of you guys, and he said that the new album's really helping him through some shit in his life that he didn't really think he could get through and it's just given him the motivation and positive mindset to really pull through and do good things with his life and i just wanted to share that with you i asked him if he was wanted to call in and say something he said he'd rather not but he was more than happy to have me share his story um just wanted to let you know that you know the album's positively impacting a lot of people it's it's really good stuff man Keep it up. I can't wait to see what the future brings for MXPX. I'll see you guys in Philly, New York City. Can't fucking wait, man. Have a good one. Dude, that is so cool to hear, Bill. Dude, what was I just saying, you guys? Placebo effect or not, it makes an effect on people. Bill's coworker just randomly hears this music. I'm, like, starting to tear up, you guys. If you're watching on YouTube, I'm starting to tear up. You can watch me cry on YouTube. If you don't already uh, <laughs> subscribe to my YouTube, it's Mike Herrera video or just Mike Herrera, but find me there. Anyway, golly, uh, you know, I think being a being a dad, I'm a little more emotional these days being a dad and seeing my kids grow up. It, and this is what this is like, uh, hearing about Bill's coworker, hearing about there's a new connection built with Bill and his co They don't talk. They're he's in maintenance. They're not really like around each other that much. But like 
there's like a little nod going on here, you know, like you can nod to each other. And I don't, re I mean, I'm just trying to think of like when I'm writing these songs, I'm not thinking about Bill's coworker or like somebody that's addicted to this or that, but in a much more vague way, that's somewhere in my head. Like, I know people are going to be listening to this, so I'm trying to, I'm trying to hit them. I'm tr first, first and foremost, I'm always trying to make a catch. Excuse me, a catchy song, a catchy sounding lyric, a catchy sounding uh, phrasing, and that's most important. But then beyond that, I, I, I try to go. Okay, what are these? What are these people going to think when they hear this? Are they going to be encouraged by it? Are they going to be more mad? Are they, this is going to make them more aggravated? And so I really do kind of write a little bit with that in mind. But, man, there's just no way I could have any idea that that even songs from from this year, twenty well, it would be last year, 2023 that came out, but just songs that are new and fresh, for MXPX are still hitting people in a way that, that makes them fan. Like it's humbling and it's cool to hear, but I think the probably most unbelievable part is not that the music helps this guy, but that he could hear a new band and a new song that he'd never heard before and latch onto it and become a fan. Like, that almost just doesn't happen. Like, I, I don't remember the last time I became a fan of a brand new band. Um, even if I just listened to them, like, yeah, that's pretty cool. But then it, nothing, like, hooks me that hard. I mean, there there are songs that hook me, sure. But, wow, I'm in awe. And I, I thank you. Thank you for that call, Bill. Amazing. Philly, New York, we'll see you in both spots. Uh, new York City, of course, you got to have the pizza you know this. Which pizza? I mean, isn't there like some huge, hugely popular pizza place that takes you like weeks and weeks to order it? I don't suggest going there. It's called Chrissy's Pizza or something. Um, I don't suggest trying that because it. it, it I've heard it's a good pizza. Um, but two weeks to, to to get a pizza i don't know we'll see we'll see um where else in new york arlene's grocery if you're there you're probably not going to have time to go there when we play you know because we're playing at night but arlene's grocery is a bar in in lower manhattan um i think it's lower manhattan um anyway it's a bar they do like they're famous for live karaoke i went out there with oliver peck one night and we did live karaoke I sang an Elvis Costello song. Um, I, I I don't know if it's on video. I mean, this was kind of before everything was on video. Um, some things were on video back then, but now almost everything's on video. <laughs> it's crazy. Um, yeah, New York. Uh, definitely get high. I mean, go up into a high building and look at the skyline because it is absolutely insane. And I, I suggest doing that in Tokyo, uh, Tokyo, Japan, and Paris, France, um, any big city like that, highly suggest get high, go to the tallest building, look out there, take some pictures, do some videos, whatever, enjoy it. But it's a cool thing to see. Just so many, like, I, I think about all the workers. Like, w I was in Brazil and uh just looking at the city you know like this this all got made this all got built and it's just that's another thing that blows my mind my mind's just continually blown just walking around going whoa 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 so um yeah thank you thanks for the call i love that you love the new album i love that your coworker is now a new fan that's just all around a great story um that placebo pill you just gave me is making me feel real good. Real good. Okay, let's get to another one. Hi, Mike. This is Dan. Daniel Leary calling again. I just heard on the latest podcast you were talking about thinking about drinking coffee again, getting into coffee. And I have 
a very serious, sincere recommendation if you want to start drinking coffee again and you want it to be as good as I imagine that that coffee in Indonesia was for you. <laughs> check out Oakland Coffee, which is the coffee company owned and run by Green Day. Mm -hmm. It is such good coffee. It's seriously so good. Um, they, they have a dark roast, and my wife and I, neither of us like dark roast, but it's the one that has, like, the strongest Green Day tie-in. It has the little unicorn from their, you know, most recent album on it. And it's the best thing in the world that has that little unicorn on it. We're, we're not dark roast fans, but it mm. tastes so good. And the other thing is, you know, Green Day, our environmentalists, and my wife had heard about Oakland coffee because they are actually, you know, I guess pun intended, they're the greenest coffee company in the world. They're the most environmentally, or they're one of the top most environmentally sound coffee companies, whereas coffee as an industry is like ravishing our planet. And they have took it seriously to like use sustainable sources and they have compostable K cups and their coffee is just so good. Like every varietal, so don't you call it? With, with coffee, every variety they have is really good. And uh, I should have called when I wasn't walking down the street with all these cars passing me. I feel it's very loud. Anyway, do check out Oakland Coffee. I would actually send you some, but I'm afraid it would be like lost in a corner. Like you have to go get it and try it. It's really good. Okay. All right. Thanks for the suggestion, Dan. Appreciate the call. Oakland Coffee. Um, MXPX has our own coffee, you know. Um, I, I couldn't say. It's it's actually locally roasted. So um, it's a local Bremerton company, Utop Co Copy Coffee Utopia. They're a, a roasting company. And um, James, who used to work with MXPX, used to roast there. And so that got us going on the coffee thing. Um, hats off to Oakland Coffee. Environment. Hey, might as well. I mean, I... We have the military and the industrial complex, all that, and the whole world's military is completely ravishing the planet, probably the most of anyone. Yet, you know, our government constantly asks individuals to, like, give up things. So in that way, I'm not, like, super environmental, but I absolutely, I absolutely think it's a, a great idea to not use plastics, microplastics, all that. I mean, we can't really get away from it, but if we can cut it down all the better. I mean, plastic's constantly getting into our bodies. We're eating credit cards once a month or something like that, like the equivalent of it. So yeah, uh, sounds great to me. Um, as far as taste goes, yeah, I mean, I only want to drink good coffee these days. I only want to, I don't want to go out of my way. See, that's the thing. It's like, I'm not going to like buy coffee just to try it. But if I had the option to like taste it, I'm down. So that's where I'm at with coffee as far as like my willingness to go out of my way to get it, not going to happen. But if there's coffee available, like my mom's birthday was, was yesterday. Shout out to my mom. Um, it, it probably wasn't her birthday, depending on when you're listening to this, by the way. So anyway, I w went over to her house, hang out a little bit. She's like, would you like some coffee? They got a new uh, Italian coffee maker. So they're super espressoed out these days. Um, and I'm like, she wants to make me a cup of coffee. Yes, I would like a cup of coffee. Thank you. And she made me a decaf cup just because I don't really drink caffeine. Like I said, I might be drinking caffeine in the future, but I don't know if I want a full cup of caffeine. So I'm starting out just drinking my coffee decaf and it was nice it was nice i just drank it black had a nice froth on the top and i can dig it i can dig that um but was it so good that i need to go out of my way to get another one hmm no not really um but i'm definitely not knocking coffee i, I really like the idea of coffee i like the culture of coffee um I like that there's coffee shops. I like that that's a thing. It's kind of cool. Like, it's maybe one of the better parts of our, of our, maybe some of the worst too, but no, one of the better parts of our culture is, is that there's still coffee places where you can go and sit down and catch up with your friend, your family. Um, you know, thinking about how times constantly change and fast times, fast times, we're living a fast life and 
sitting down and, and having a conversation is valuable to me. And, and it's something that you don't really get to do as a person unless you plan for it. Unless you're like, Hey, let's meet for coffee. Let's meet up and go walk or run or whatever it is. Um, that's something I'm happy is still a thing in this society because it's really, really important just to, just to talk to people, talk to your friends, talk to new people, talk to people you haven't seen in a long, like whatever it is, communication, always key, always good. Um, love it. All right. Thanks for the call, Daniel. Yo, this is Thatcher Johnson from Texas. I'm nine years old, if you're wondering why my voice sounds so weird. And I have an idea for a 30-plus years in running album that can have Everything Sucks and... Yeah? Secret Weapon. Yeah. Acoustic, if you can. And tomorrow's another day. And Rolling Strong. Good one. I like Rolling Strong. Cold and All Alone. Also. Middle Name. Punk Rock Show. And Moments Like This. And let's ride. And all of it. Awesome. Okay. Bye. <laughs> Thanks for calling in. Take on my idea. You're welcome. Sorry, man. Thank. Uh, I didn't catch your first name, but it was like something Johnson, nine years old. Um, maybe Derek. No, I'm not sure. But uh, thanks for calling, and thanks for the idea. I never, honestly, I never really thought about, we did 10 years in running. We didn't do 20 years in running, but yeah, maybe we, maybe we'll do a, a 30 years in running. We could do, by the time we get the idea off the ground, it could be 40 years in running. Um, but yeah, I like, I, I like some of your picks, um, uh, secret weapon, cold and all alone. Let's ride rolling strong. I love playing the rolling strong. Rolling strong is not one of the it's not as popular as, say, like, Not Today. Not Today is the first song off of our new album. And Rolling Strong is the first song on our last album from 2018, the self-titled album. Um, but that song in particular isn't as popular as, like, Let's Ride is hugely popular. Um, even Friday Tonight is more popular. So it's kind of weird because it's, like, usually the first track on an album is very popular. Um but for some reason, the algorithm just kind of skipped over that. People just didn't really listen to that one. But um, I love it when people request Rolling Strong because it's one of my favorites on that album. And I love to do it live, too. It's just like, hold on tight. Let's go. Do, 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 do. It's, yeah, it's fun. Very cool idea. Thanks for that idea. Appreciate it. All right, let's do one more voicemail. And I will see y'all. We have the dingies coming next week. Um yeah, it's going to be good. Peg Leg and Bean from the Dengies, singer and the bass player. Uh, they're in Hawaii, so we'll we'll talk about all things Hawaii and all things Dengies. Um, all right, let's get to one last one. This is Bill again. Bill called twice in a row, but, you know, I like your voicemails, Bill, and I like your voice. It's very soothing. So I'm going to play it again. It's almost like a placebo effect. Here we go. Hey, Mike, this is Bill from Brockport, Pennsylvania, calling in again. I have a couple quick questions, most of which revolving around live show. Um, just watch some footage from, footage from the Indonesia shows. You guys freaking killed it. It was awesome. But I think Chris wasn't playing with you guys. Is that going to be the case for the U.S. dates, too? Just curious on that. Um, I've seen you guys were using actual amps and cabs. Were you not running your modelers, or were you running them just for stage sound, or were they low volume, or just kind of curious on that also? And also with the big flyouts and stuff, does Yuri bring his own drums, or does he just carry cymbal, snare, kind of the standard go-to flyout stuff for some bands? Um, 
Another question that sparks my interest, something I never really thought of, I just accepted it until I thought about it for a second. The song GSF, what does GSF actually stand for? Um, another note from watching that show, the hammer on part at the end of Let's Ride that Tom did, that was freaking awesome. That, the, bringing the chorus back in that way, that was awesome. I absolutely loved that. Um, I noticed that moments like this and Can't Keep Waiting weren't on the set list. Any chance we could sneak them into New York or Philly? Albeit both of them and both songs that I'd be stoked to hear live and see in person. And the Ataris opening for you guys. Are they doing a full band setup? Just something I was curious on also. And one last little thing. I know this is a lot of questions, but... The skate decks that you guys are teasing on Instagram right now. My son's really interested in one, and he's getting his first legit skateboard for Christmas, like not Walmart bought, pre-made skateboard. He's getting independent trucks, Spitfire wheels. He's really into it, and he's seen those, and he said, that's what I want for my first skate deck, Dad. Is there any chance we can get those before Christmas, or are we getting them before Christmas? Any info would be awesome. Thank you. Thank you for all you do. Much love. Take care. All right, Bill. Thanks for the call again. Appreciate it. A lot of live show stuff. So let's talk. Let's talk live shows. Let's uh, let's just get into it. Actually, let me just tell you, <laughs> we're in 2024 now. So you probably got the skateboard or tried to. So thank you for your support on that. And I hope your son uh, does well skateboarding, keeps it safe, but still goes hard and and learns some cool tricks. Um, now the the live stuff. Where do I begin? Uh, Indonesia show. This is easy. Chris, Chris, uh, Indonesia came very last minute scheduling wise, and Chris was not prepared and could not make it. So we just did it. We just did it without him. It was great. Had a great time. Uh, it worked. We did maybe a different set because of that. So we did some different songs. Um, but when Chris is here, we're going to do can't keep waiting yes we can do a lot of stuff um you know because there's different guitar parts and stuff so the set definitely changes a little bit when we're a three-piece versus a four-piece um but for the most part all the classics are there and um even the new classics stay up all night not today um so for something like not today i play chris's part on the bass on the intro so when it goes and I go so it like bam yeah I'm getting lost in my head but uh yeah we just switch up a couple things but yeah it's it's, it's pretty easy um stage amps that's kind of changes per show depending on what we can get in a particular city we will just rent everything there drum wise stage amp wise um we have our amp, we bring our heads with us everywhere uh guitar heads and bass head um drums and sim like snare cymbals sure bring those but we pretty much rent drum sets everywhere we go because it's just it's too big to put on the plane so it doesn't make too much sense and oh we have a lot of gear. We we travel with a lot of cases, and over the years, it's it's been up to like twenty cases. But that was that was pre nine eleven. We had like twenty cases. In some cases, uh, an actual fifty watt Marshall guitar head would go on the plane in a case, in a road case, and it's so heavy. Well, ever since nine eleven, the weights have been going down further and further and further. And we have to have these like super light travel black case, these Pelican cases, air Pelicans. We pack everything in there. We get to the airport. People have, you know, the crew is like weighing everything. And it, it's a real situation, but kind of, you know, bands do it all the time. All, all tons of bands do this. It's just, it's always been like that. Um, just traveling around, but, uh, we always have, even if you see real amps, we pretty much have our model modelers there too. So we use real amps um, as backups 
um, for the most part. Or and and you honestly, you might have seen a clip, seen a clip when he was using that backup instead of the actual head. Sometimes they go down or something like that. But um, yeah, gear. It's just it constantly breaks. Yeah, you're, you're constantly having to like keep up with things. Get new headphones. Get I had to get a new wireless system to replace the second one I had, and it, you know it's just constantly buying things and spending money on that credit card. So. That's what being in a band is all about. But we are going to play Can't Keep Waiting on this next couple shows. Um, moments like this, possibly. I can't say because we're going to switch out some of the songs in the set. But I don't know which one's in which city. So, you know. It's going to be great, though. I mean, I'm not I'm not worried at all that people are not going to enjoy these, these, these shows. Um, the Ataris are coming full band. They're playing... All of our shows coming up, and they sound great live. Chris is a great singer. He really, you know, when he's doing his thing, it's very cool. And, and I, they're one of my favorite bands. I love the songs. I love the way they sound live. So you guys are going to enjoy that. And MXPX is playing a long set, probably the longest set you'll have ever seen us play. Not the longest set we've ever played, because our longest set was probably Cornerstone... 1997 somewhere in there we were on the encore two stage it wasn't the main stage yet cornerstone festival in in bushnell illinois and we were headlining the the encore two stage which is just a giant stage with a tent in the middle of the place um we played power got cut off it got put back on we play we came back out and we played like another like whole set almost like 40 minutes we played for over 2 hours that night and that was the only time we've ever played that long any other show has been much less than that and then this year 2024 and well last year too Seattle at the end of 2023 we we started doing really long sets so we're easily at an hour and a half if not more um for the new find a way home tour set that we're doing and we will like i said switch out songs here and there but it's it's not going to change the whole it's going to be about the same you know a few things will be different because this song is slightly longer or shorter than another song but for the most part we're working with with trying to do about the same amount of time every show man it's so much fun gsf is also a song that we're we're doing i think we're gonna do it like w sometimes we do it sometimes we don't it kind of comes in and out of our set like a lot of songs do um gsf is one of those moments like this is one of those rolling strong is one of those friday tonight oh friday tonight we play most most sets um friday tonight not today stay up all night let's ride punk rock show responsibility chick magnet those are like the, the staples um Secret Weapon, kind of a staple, yeah. I think it's a staple at this point. Um, it's not... We don't always play Secret Weapon, but almost always. So I'd say it's like second-tier staple. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's too soon to tell with some of the new songs, although I would say Not Today and Stay Up All Night is a staple or quickly becoming a staple um, just because of the way our show is. It, it makes sense, but... Um, Wow. GSF stands for Girl Schmurls Foundation. And, you know, I got the idea because Matt from the band Blenderhead, he was the drummer of Blenderhead and Roadside Monument and I want to say Don't Know, uh, the band Don't Know. Um, they were a funk band in Seattle, early days, early tooth and nail days. So Matt was hanging out with us a lot in those days and we were recording our first album, Poconacha. And it was the summertime, summer before our senior year of high school. He was probably just out of high school, didn't really have much to do. I think he was like a year or two older than us. Obviously didn't have a job that was too demanding. So he was hanging out with us in the studio. And Yuri came in and had just gotten broken up with. His girlfriend broke up with him. His first like legit high school girlfriend. Um, well, we were just going in. We were just going into our senior year of high school. So we'd been in high school. Um, 
Yuri comes in, he's broken hearted, and Matt goes, Man, you gotta join the Girls Schmurls Foundation. That's all he said, like something like that. And like I took that, I was like, I'm gonna write a song and I wrote GSF. And just based off Yuri getting his heart broken and Matt coming up and consoling him and telling him you need to join the GSF, the Girls Schmurls Foundation. Now he didn't say GSF, he just said Girls Schmurls. Girls Schmurls. It should be a foundation or something like that. Um, I just liked that. It was, it was, that was clever. So that became a song. Um, yeah, Tari's full band, MXPX full band, um, ready for New York City, Webster Hall, and then Philly. Um, I assume it's going to be cold, so we're going to bundle up and get some pizza and enjoy the city. Can't wait. Um, that's it. All right. I will, uh, I'll see y'all next week. We have the dingies. We talk about, um, we're going to talk about Lahaina because being their bass player lived in Ohina, Lahaina, sorry. And it t- completely burned down and peg, um, peg leg, their singer is living in Humboldt County, California. And he he's like a hippie type kind of guy, you know, grows his own food, has a family, and not that having a family is a hippie thing. Uh, and he flew out to Hawaii, and so uh, the podcast is going to be those guys in Hawaii and me here in Bremerton. So it's going to be good. Check that out. All right, mxpx.com for tickets. Come see us live. You will not regret it. It's going to be great. It's going to be so much fun. You can bring your kids to all the shows. They're all all ages, but... Um, you should have an adult with them if they're under 18 or under 16. Bring an adult to chaperone them. Just make sure they're safe. Make sure they don't get swallowed into the pit somewhere. And also, you know, people that are wondering, should I bring my real young kid? It really depends on the kid. You know, if the kid is like, likes to stay up late, um, the shows are usually, New York's going to be over pretty early because it's an early show. New York's kind of like that with the, the, the times for the city, but everything else is usually done by 11 ish 11 30 like we're done but if you have a kid that's like out by nine usually i don't know it might be rough it might be hard to hard to get them you know excited about staying up so late for an mx peak show but if your kid's old enough to stay up absolutely bring them it's it's definitely a, a kids love the show it's it's fun it's energetic and if they have any love for mx peaks previously like listening to our songs they're going to enjoy it. Um, but it really is. It depends on the kids. Like my kids, they love MXPX, but they can't handle staying out till 11 or 12. Like that's too much for them. So a couple more years and then they, maybe they'll start staying out late for the late shows. But for the most part, bringing, bringing them to daytime festival shows and, and stuff like that. So kids are, are really good for, for the daytime fests. All right. Shout out to Bob McKnight. Thanks for editing. Thanks for being my producer. Thanks for all you do, my friend. Make sure you check out. If you're looking for other podcasts and you like lighthearted, fun, funny stories, The Bob and Katie Show, it's a little glimpse into marriage and parenthood and just crazy life living. And it's fun. So you can check out The Bob and Katie Show on wherever you listen to your podcasts. If you haven't already done so, please like, subscribe, heart on whatever you listen to the Mike Herrera podcast. It really helps more people find the podcast. And as, as things go, you know, you get some people that used to listen, they don't listen anymore and you get new listeners and we keep going, but all the love, anything you share, anything you like, anything you do like that helps us out. So if you want to be on the podcast, you can call in 360-830-6660. Please ladies, we need some more ladies to call like Carrie did earlier. I want to hear from the ladies. I know you guys are emotional and I want to hear those those feelings and those thoughts. So if you came to the show in LA, would love a call. Would love for you to call in. If you're coming to a show this year, 2024, and you're excited about it, call in, tell me about it. I would love to 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 hear it. All right? All right. That's it, mxpeaks.com. I love all y'all. See you in New York City next. 